Hi guys. It is a pleasant enough spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and the social isolation chamber of Garfield, Texas. And my name is Sam Mitchell and this is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza bringing you today's <coughs> edition of the Corona, the Corona Panic Chronicles for, where are we, Wednesday morning, April 8th, 2020, as the global industrial economy grinds to a halt and uh, <clears throat> millions, if not billions of people are out of work. Uh, hiding from the bogeyman, but uh, we're going to look today about, you know, about some, um, <clears throat> I don't know if these are unintended or intended consequences. I have a bagworm trying to climb up. He's going right around the, the lens, so if you see someone like this, this is I am being completely infested by bagworms. That's him peeking in. He's trying to get inside my camera to build a bag, I guess. Uh, speaking of bags, we're going to be talking about bagworms uh, in a minute uh, in today's. This is kind of a cross between. It's, it's drawing the dots between the Corona Panic Chronicles and Collapse Chronicles. And we're going to talk about what the corona panic means for plastic pollution uh, here on this planet. But before we do that, I, uh, I just want to stop by this other story. Uh, right here from Yahoo News, so I guess what this fellow did, this editor, Mike Burn Burns, whatever his name is, he went around and, uh, you know, combing through all of these other stories to get uh, quotes on the life after the pandemic. How will Corona panic change us? So uh, I'm just going to share. There's probably 30 of these uh, of these little quotes that he found. I just want to share a few of my favorites on the perspectives of life after uh, corona panic. <clears throat> I'm just going to touch on a, a few of these. Uh, here is the service industry may never recover. This is Paul Wiseman from Associated Press. <clears throat> the pandemic is almost sure to leave a mark on the way people work shop and socialize, perhaps permanently shifting the way many service industries operate. We shall see. Here we go. Uh, obviously, the fear of infection will linger long after the virus itself has been contained, that the panicked herd of sheeple even when the, the threat of the virus uh, is no longer there, people will remain in panic. That fear, as if it were not already the dominant uh, motion in the human species, this is probably uh, the biggest no-shit Sherlock uh, perspective of them all. This is Java Lake. Java Lang <clears throat> quoted in the week, uh, quote, we will likely never live through a period again where people don't wonder about when the next pandemic could hit. Well, it could, it could hit tomorrow. Uh, okay, let's hear from Betha Javerick from the Financial Times. <clears throat> Businesses will be forced to rethink their global value chains. These chains were shaped to maximize efficiency and profits 
And while just-in-time manufacturing may be the optimal way of producing a highly complex item such as a car, the disadvantages of a system that requires all of its elements to work like clockwork have now been exposed. Yes, yeah, so you get in that bug, you get that, you get that bagworm. I have these things, they're crawling up my legs, they're crawling inside my hat. Okay, uh, I like this guy, Harry Grabar from Slate. I think taking the Andy the Gardener view of this, quote, Americans will never stop going to basketball games. Well, I mean, they'll stop going if the basketball season has been shut down by the police state, but they mean after this one. Americans will never stop going to basketball games. They won't stop going on vacation. They'll need to do business. No decentralizing technology so far, not telegrams, not telephones, not television, and not the internet, has dented that human desire to shake hands despite technologist predictions to the contrary. Yes. Uh, okay, let's hear from Andreas Krieg from Al Jazeera. Uh, <laughs> summing up the, uh, the No Shit Sherlock uh, prediction of, quote, Fragile states will be pushed into chaos and anarchy, and there is a realistic chance that some regimes will not survive the corona panic as mass dissidence towards the end of mass mortality will bring hundreds of thousands to the street to overthrow regimes whose legitimacy will be undermined by their inability to manage this crisis. You better believe that uh, th this is going to uh, lead to, well, just what the man said. Uh, let's see, okay, one of my particular favorites, this is Stephen M. Walt from Foreign Policy. Why don't you go hide in the tent? If you go hide in the tent over there, I don't think that the, that the bugs are going to follow you. Sancho Panza wishes there was an insect apocalypse in Garfield, Texas in the spring of 2020. There is no insect apocalypse. <laughs> His dog. Sancho, I know, it's just awful. Uh, anyway, Stephen M. Walt from Foreign Policy. In short, the corona panic will create a world that is less open, less prosperous, and less free. It did not have to be this way, but the combination of a deadly virus, inadequate planning, and incompetent leadership has placed humanity on a new and worrisome path. Close quote. And of course, what Stephen left out here is the what I consider to be the single biggest ingredient in the combination, which would be mass panic, uh, when the when the entire population of a planet turns into a panicked herd of sheeple, and he certainly. Uh, did not give the mass media's uh, responsibility in this. <coughs> Here's an interesting one from Jack Schenker at The Guardian. Quote, the implications for big cities are immense. If proximity to one's job is no longer a significant factor in deciding where to live, for example, then the appeal of the suburbs wanes. We could be heading toward a world in which existing city centers and far 
flung new villages rise in prominence while traditional commuter belts fade away. This is what uh, you know James Howard Kunstler has been talking about for years. But uh, they end up with uh, this guy's favorite quote, and possibly mine. This is the bagworm wanting to join the uh, the rant. We're going to wrap up with Kevin Drum from Mother Jones. <clears throat> quote. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't think much of anything will be changed forever, and I wish people would stop saying so <coughs> based on two whole weeks of practicing isolation and social distancing. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you, Kevin. But anyway, now we're going to get to uh, the story from the good old Associated Press about how you better believe uh, one change is already happening. Speaking of bagworms, I'm going to have to get this bagworm off of my camera so we can start talking about bags. Uh, but before we do, guys, I just wanted to mention where, where I found this story as I was researching uh, have you been to uh, like a Walmart or a Home Depot in the last week and uh, the parking lots? Damn these things. Uh, I, I was at, I, I drove by Home Depot and Walmart here in, in Bastrop, Texas. Just a little town in Texas. Uh, and noticed that in the parking lots of both there are probably hundreds of gloves thrown, just thrown out in the parking lot. And I, so what is happening is, you know, people, <clears throat> the panic sheeple, they're, they're putting on these gloves and they go shopping at the grocery store, or the big box store, or whatever, and they wear these gloves you know, because they're so terrified of touching anything in the store. So then they come back out to their car and they unload their groceries or their packages into their cars, put away the shopping cart, and then they have these, uh, these gloves that they're absolutely terrified have the coronavirus on them. So what they do, uh, they're, they're too terrified to put the gloves back in their car. So what they do is they just, you know, they rip the gloves off and throw them on the ground. So, uh, I mean, judging by, the, the, you know, right here in Bastrop, Texas, uh, the number of these discarded gloves, uh, good Lord, multiply that, there are... <laughs> I'm guessing every day millions upon millions, if not <clears throat> into the billions of these uh, gloves, which are basically each glove is, is, is pretty much, you know, equivalent to a balloon. We're going to have millions and millions, billions of these, uh, you know, these wildlife choking gloves, and, and everyone's terrified to touch them. They're just piling up in the parking lots. Uh, a big rain is going to come through. They're going to wash all of these gl goddamn gloves, you know, into the creeks and then into the river and on into, in this case, the Gulf of Mexico. Every one of these gloves in Bastra, there there's six blocks from the river heading straight to the Gulf of Mexico to start choking turtles to death. Uh, you know, all of this stuff about how the coronavirus is a good thing for the planet. Uh, anyway, but gloves is only a small part of the story from this story right here in good old Associated Press take a wild guess how many comments. We have seven people. You know, every one of these corona panic stories about how many people are dying, 
uh, you know, has 7,000 uh, <clears throat> responses. Seven people uh, on this planet have responded to this headline. Pandemic deals blow to plastic bag bans and plastic reduction. Yes, it does. Uh, they're coming out of Portland, Oregon with this uh, story. <clears throat> Just weeks ago, cities and even states across the U.S. were busy banning straws, limiting takeout containers, and mandating that shoppers bring their reusable bags or pay a fee as the movement to eliminate single-use plastics took hold in mainstream America. What a difference a pandemic makes. In a matter of days, hard-won bans to reduce the use of plastics, and particularly plastic shopping sacks, you know, these one-time, one single-use plastic shopping bags across the U.S. have come under fire amid worries about the coronavirus clinging to reusable bags, cups, and straws. Governors in Massachusetts and Illinois have banned or strongly discouraged the use of reusable grocery bags. Oregon suspended its brand new ban on plastic bags this week and cities from Bellingham, Washington to Albuquerque, New Mexico have announced a, hi a, hi a hiatus on plastic bag bans as the corona panic rages. Wow. Add to that a rise in takeout and a ban on reusable cups and straws at the few coffee stores that remain open, and environmentalists worry that the corona panic could set back their efforts to tackle plastic pollution for years to come. This is Glenn Quadros, owner of the Great American Diner and Bar in Seattle. Quote, People are scared for their lives, their livelihoods, the economy, feeding their loved ones. So the environment is taking a back seat. Yes, a back seat. The, the environment is not taking a back seat. It's no longer in the trunk. It's no longer in the trailer. The environment has been tossed out the window like a uh, like a one-time use uh, glove. Uh, the environment, uh, you know, all of these environmentalists, and uh, I, I'm numbering myself among these uh, that concern for the environment has been completely, completely taken off the table, thrown out the window, flushed down the toilet. It is nowhere on the radar of the panicked sheeple. Nowhere. Let, let me tell you where bag bands are, are, are placing, uh, and the planet eaters, as we're getting ready to see, are having a field day. Quadroff has had to lay off 15 employees and seen a 60% decline in his business since Seattle all but shut down to slow <clears throat> the panic. For now, he is using biodegradable containers for takeout and delivery, but those products cost him up to three times more than plastic, <clears throat> and they're getting hard to find because of the surge in takeout. He said, quote, the problem is we don't know what's in store. Everyone is in the same situation. <clears throat> and so take a wild guess how the plastics industry uh, is responding to this. <clears throat> the plastics industry 
has seized the corona panic moment <clears throat> and is lobbying hard now to overturn bans on single-use plastics by arguing that disposable plastics are the safest option amid the crisis. California, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Maine, New York, Oregon, and Vermont have statewide bans on plastic bags, and Oregon and California have laws limiting the use of plastic straws as well. Already, New York's statewide plastic bag ban is on hold. Do you think so? The Plastics Industry Association recently sent a letter to Alex Azar, head of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and asked him to speak out against plastic bag bans because they put consumers and workers at risk. And the American Recyclable Plastic Bag Alliance, which is an absolute you know, Orwellian doublespeak contradiction in terms is doubling down on its opposition to plastic bag bans under a pre-existing campaign titled Bag the Ban. Grocery worker unions also have joined the chorus. The union that represents Oregon supermarket workers is now lobbying for a ban on reusable bags and a Chicago union called for, quote, an end to the disease transmitting bag tax. Yes. They argue, critics argue that people with reusable bags don't regularly wash them. <laughs> and they're right, obviously. This is uh, Mark Seaholm, executive director of the American Recyclable uh, Plastic Bag Alliance, which of course is an alliance to ban recyclable plastic bags. Uh, anyway, uh, quote, if those bags coming into the store, you know, the, the reusable bags, if those bags coming into the store are contaminated with anything, they get put on the conveyor belt, the counter, and you're putting yourself in a bad spot. It's an unnecessary risk. Yes. Uh, one study by the U.S. National Institute of Health found that the virus can remain on plastics and stainless steel for up to three days. Uh, the CDC says it appears possible for a person uh, to get the virus by touching a surface that has the virus on it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, more studies are needed to fully assess the dangers posed by reusable bags, which are mostly made of fabric, uh, said Dr. Jennifer Vines, lead health officer for the Portland metropolitan area. Uh, blah, blah, blah. For most people, the new coronavirus causes mild or moderate symptoms, or no symptoms at all in about 25% of people, such as fever and cough that clear up in two to three weeks. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, some stores such as Trader Joe's and Target are still letting customers use their own bags if they sack their groceries themselves while others are starting to ban them. Uh, to compound all of this, 
many stores ran out of paper bags amid you know a run on groceries accelerating the move to ease restrictions on plastic bags uh, this is Joe Gillum president of the Northwest Grocery Association quote there are some stores out there that are saying for the time being please don't bring those in other stores are allowing them but right now we're asking that only freshly laundered reusable bags come in oh yes uh, environmental groups well aware of the nation's current priorities were at first unusually silent on moves to roll back plastic bag bans but they responded forcefully after the plastics industry asserted bag bans could worsen the pandemic's toll. This is John Hoserver of Greenpeace USA. Quote, the fear-driven gains, I would say the panic-driven gains the industry was able to win this month are likely to be extremely short-lived, said apocalyptimist John Hosefar of Greenpeace USA. The movement away from throwaway plastics is the kind of awakening that is not going to be that easy for the plastic industry to stop. <laughs> oh yeah, brother. You know, these apocalyptimists at, at Greenpeace, the planet eaters are having an absolute heyday. The EPA, uh, what, they, what was left, ha has been completely, for all intents and purposes, disbanded. You're going to see millions, if not billions more, uh, of these single-use plastic bags showing up all over the damn planet. Uh, I was talking with this fellow yesterday, uh, whose interview I'm going to put out on, on Sunday, uh, about how all of this takeout that since every restaurant in the U.S. Uh, is, uh, is shut down that the amount of takeout restaurant uh, garbage, you know, bags, packaging, cups, straws, plasticware is going to explode this uh the, this uh corona panic is the pla an absolute wet dream by the plastics industry uh you know if you want to make money in the corona uh panic there's one word of advice it was the same one word of advice that benjamin was getting back in 1967 plastics but with that I need to uh, wrap up today's coronavirus chronicle which was kind of a combination coronavirus I mean corona panic and collapse chronicles combined into one but I'm gonna see if I can find one story on the planet that is corona panic free and come back with the collapse chronicle of the day, assuming there is one. Someone asked me to turn the camera around to show you guys what I am looking at while I am uh, talking to you. And this is the view of the, you can't see the bagworms. This is my mulberry tree that the bagworms are absolutely destroying. Bye, guys.